everyone today i will try to answer one of the questions which i know get from many different abacus users normally there is a lot of stuff available online uh, which answers these questions but i just thought that maybe i will create a short video on this so that i don't need to really reply to individuals and i can just direct them to this recording so let's get into it uh, as you can see on the screen i'm using the same model which i used for my last video so the question is asked that how to find out what memory and disk space is required for a specific job because users are getting a lot of errors that uh, this, the job is not proceeding because the memory is not sufficient enough it needs a large memory or sometimes there are errors due to the disk space so i'm going to go through them in this short video and if you have any question then again you can comment below and i will definitely try to reply to your questions so as you can see on the screen this is the job and what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna if you want to check how much memory is needed for this kind of job or any job you go to the job module and you remember how to create a job just press create and you can name it and then you will create a job as we did in my previous videos so this is my job again how to set the job up if you uh, let me delete this and maybe I just start from scratch. So let's create a job and I will call it just for estimating. Uh, okay. okay, so let's do like this. So when you when you create a job, as you see here, you have different tabs here. When you create, press the create button. You want to do full analysis you can do that you can restart the analysis you can also give submit time if you want to queue it in somewhere somewhere so this is we keep it default again these are what you want to really print as an output data in the data file so again you can define those you can also define the scratch directory so remember when you run an abacus standard analysis then it it writes a lot of scratch files during the running which are different than the actual files which you get as an output like .dat, .odb, etc., .msg message file. So these are the scratch file which are created by Abacus in some kind of temporary scratch directory and during the run it uses those and it keeps on writing and deleting the data in those files. So you need to define that path as well and remember you need to define that path based on the job size so you have to make sure that your scratch directory in is in somewhere uh, where you have a lot of a large amount of disk space is available again i get back to how much disk space is necessary in in next few minutes if you have a subroutine then you can also define a subroutine directory here or file here and again uh, i normally prefer to use subroutines on the command prompt in a dos prompt or linux prompt and but if you want to do it you can do it here as well so i'm not a big fan of using it here okay this is the key part memory allocation so you need to define how much memory is needed for a specific job so you can specify how many megabytes of memory you are allocating for the job out of your system again you need to check your system on in your task manager what sort of memory you have so for example i have eight gigabytes of memory and i have four cores with 3.41 gigahertz of processors so in a, in a sense i have four logical processors so anyway, so you can define that in gigabytes as well. I normally prefer to define in, in percentages because I know that certain amount of memory has to be used by CAE environment and other softwares as well on the system. You can't really say that use 100%, otherwise your system will get stuck. So I'm giving 90%, which is again optimistic, but you can define lower as well if you have a very strong, uh, bigger system with a large amount of memory. And this really makes you independent of the megabytes or gigabytes needed for a specific job. Also, you can click on this, which means that Abacus will not only use uh, this memory, but it can go above this as well, if needed, and if memory is available to increase the analysis speed. So, if I am correct, yeah. Okay, you can also use multiple processing. So if you are running job in a, in a big job in a parallel processing, so you can use multiple processors here. Click on this and select as many processors as you want. I have four 
so I can use four, but generally three or four are recommended if you go more than that. And if your job is not big enough, then remember you need to, if you're working on a server or if you're using, running it on, on HPC, like high performance computing cluster, then uh, instead of solving takes less time, but then combining the, the data and copying the data in one, one place takes more time. So it doesn't, it's not that advantageous. So again, you need to find optimum processor number again abacus documentation explains that normally two three four are enough but you can go with more as well if you have a very big job also if you have gpus then obviously you can use that for acceleration again you can define if you want the de domain decomposition or you want to define the computation in parallel so so it computes in parallel as well so again you can you can do that here precision why i always prefer to go with full precision and double precision so that in explicit because if you have a very small or very large number then it should be able to get as much as many digits as possible to get accurate results so that's how you set up the job now you don't know what memory it's going to use this is a small model so what you can do instead of submitting it directly you can press the data check option and then it will check for the data and once it's finished with the data check this will mean that it will do the input input file processing all the parameters which you have input are correct is there any problem it identifies then it will definitely report it to you okay so as you see the data check is completed here so to, in order to see the outcomes of the data check you press monitor and when you press monitor it will in this window here and here you see the logs, how it went. So it went into the input file processor and it completed it with no time. So no errors, no warnings. Obviously there is no run, so you don't need any output thread. And this is the main thing. You have to go to the data file and you need to see if there are any errors or warnings. So you just go down, it defines the model the keywords, which are defined in the file. And if there are any other things which are there, you can just keep an eye on that and see if they will influence your results or not. Then at the end, it gives you the problem size. So for example, here you can see that the total number of elements in this case are 694. There are some tie constraints associated with the elements, which is 549. And for contact, they, it has generated few elements because there is a contact interaction going on. Number of nodes are this and also the total degree of freedom which is the number of degrees of freedom of each node times the number of nodes and it also later on gives the time which, is, which took to for input, input file processing and finally it gives you the memory estimate so again oops uh, it's a bit unstable up here so these are the memory estimates so remember these are estimates these are not the actual values so for this job it will require a minimum memory of 9 megabytes so in your case if you have a big model you will get a big number here and also a memory to minimize the input output related stuff is 12 megabytes so maybe i will go with an allocation of 12 megabytes or higher for this kind of job if i am limited to the memory but again it's here it gives all the details on these estimates that okay these are not doesn't mean the final value during the analysis it may change because there might be more complications more elements are coming in elements are being deleted they are deforming so it needs more iteration and so on so again all these things are mentioned here so these are not the final values but this gives you kind of initial estimate of how much memory is needed for your model so if you have made a model and if you do a data check and if you find out that these memories are larger than or close to the capacity of your system then you might have to reduce the model size or maybe look for a pc which has or a workstation which has a higher memory than what is required here because definitely you might be needing more memory than what is estimated here let's look at abacus documentation on what it says about this so So if you look at the documentation, you can just for, I normally search on Google Abacus documentation if I don't have access to it. And that's what I have done here. And this is pretty old version of Abacus, but still everything is pretty much valid. Not much has been changed other than the new things which come into play. So again, you go to the analysis user manual and here, or you can also go to the installation guides. And here you go to the system requirement notes. So if you press this, 
it gives you different types of uh, requirements which are needed for that specific version so if in this case this for this version this kind of fortran compiler is good enough again for for the disk space as i told you your disk space will be dependent on the memory physical memory installed and generally if you are doing a standard analysis then it will write a big scratch file as well so you want to allocate a disk space which should be four three to four times the amount of physical memory installed on the computer so you are normally looking at a very uh, big file for the scratch directory if you're doing a standard or analysis for explicit analysis it doesn't write the scratch directory but still you need some some kind of disk space where all the output files are written so again that depends on how much output you are requesting and then how big is your model okay so this space problem you can sort this way memory again a memory as i told you you can allocate percentage of your overall memory or you can give gigabytes or megabytes as i told you when you were defining the memory itself so also they define something else in in, in the installation guides as well how to define the memory so for a scratch again you can use a scratch path here by using this command uh, if you are do using a typical command prompt for example let's say if you uh, if you want to run abacus through command prompt then for the same job i will use a command abacus job equals to the name of the file which will be if i go back to the file name here then it's memest so i will say Test. and then if there's no user subroutine then i will add user equals to the name of the subroutine if there is it's not there then i will just keep it like this and i want to run interactively so this means i can see on the screen on the com in this window what is happening so i can write interactive or inter whatever i type if i only want to do data check then i just write data check and also if i want to define a memory then i can say memory equals to and then i can give a value let's say in that case i use 95 90 percent of the memory so i can just like that and then i press enter and then it will run the job so so you can do that in a traditional old-fashioned way if you are coming for that so you can define the memory in all those parameters which you define in cae using these command prompts so this all gives you those so if you are using multiple cpus then you will use cpus equal to that in the same line there domains you can again write domains equal to whatever number of domains you need and so on so, so again you can have a look at this documentation it's abacus installation and licensing guide and it's in the memory and other installation so so this is section 4.1.1 in this documentation other than that again as i said abacus documentation is very self-explained and very detailed so if you look at that most of the time you find your answers but sometimes you don't have access or you don't have time so you can look at this video and i hope this helps so again make sure that you have sufficient disk space you have sufficient memory and if also you have sufficient space for the scratch data especially for standard analysis so again you you can play around with that so that's this i already showed you you use this command in your command prompt or you can do it directly in cae as i showed you before so if you are able to estimate as we did here okay this is the memory which is required so i will go with slightly higher than this memory two or three times more maybe and look for a system like that that was the question by a few of the users or subscribers recently so i hope this this will answer your questions if you have any more questions about these kind of errors or problems then please uh, write in the comments below and i will try to answer that uh, so till the next video i will see you with some other more interesting stuff bye for now and good luck with your abacus journey